Good day everyone, this is Cert Instructor Ron. Hey, I wanted to talk to you today about the Cert program. Now the Cert program is important. It uses a lot of people in the community to help with disasters. But before we get into what Cert does, please like and subscribe if you want. You don't have to, I'm still going to make videos and get the word out. But anyways, um, Community Emergency Response Team. So, just like the patch says, um, you can look it up on the internet, find out what it is, get a hold of somebody in local emergency management, find out if they're doing a class. That's an easy way to do it. Okay, with that said, I'm going to move on to programs or apps you might want to have on your phone as a CERT person. So, some of these programs are pretty nice, or apps, whatever you want to call them. There's a CERT deployment, that's one. Um, you can log in with it and, you know, uh, do your, your work on the phone and tell about casualties or mark them so people know and keep that. That's only if there's data available. If there's no data, well, probably not gonna happen. Other ones are Radar Scope, Radar Omega. Uh, there's uh, Chase programs, Chaser locators for those people. That's a pretty good program to keep up in the field so somebody knows where you are once you put your beacon up on Spotter Network or one of those other programs out there. APRS, kind of the same thing. You have to be a ham operator to use that. They're the other ones that you can log on and use, but if you're not a ham, you can't use it. And that's going to be things like um, Echo Link and Peanut, and there's others out there. So those are the applications plus Zello. Uh, that you're going to want to have. Zelle is really neat because it's a walkie-talkie app. Everybody can download it. I've talked about it before, you know, for family, friends, whatever, co-workers, whatever. And you can privatize your channel, block people from listening to what you're saying, unlike a walkie-talkie. So it's a really good program to have. So I'd highly recommend Zello. I use it all the time. I used to use it with firefighters in Alabama. We'd watch over them for storm spotted before they went out and deployed. So, with that said, there's a lot you can do with a phone, but you can't do everything. Data goes down, you're SLL, so to speak. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk about is, you guys hear me talk about it all the time, the illustrious ham radio. Now, ham is far superior to GMRS, even a lot of people want to argue you can talk a whole lot further. Simplex, simplex means radio, radio. You can talk to Japan with it. Not through the internet, but radio to radio contact through airwaves. That's going to be AM. So anybody that's general class and above, for the most part, can have really good access to AM. And that's the standard for emergency communication. So GMS can be used, but it's not the standard. It's going to work in a pinch. You're not going to have as many repeaters. It's at this point in time, it's $35 to get your license. You just pay and, and we'll say play. So we've got repeaters set up on GRMS here in Oklahoma City. I get it on all the time. We do nets. And the good thing about it is a lot of people, once they get their GRMS license, goes into ham radio. And from there, they'll generally get their general extra class license, which gives them a whole lot better frequency to the world. So it's a good thing to have. It's going to be the standard when everything else fails, ham radio still works. So those are the things that, that I'm going to implore you to get. But the rest of it, we're going to look at the CERT instructor guide, and we're going to go over that with people. So if you're a CERT person, you've probably heard some of this stuff before. If or not, it's new, so stick around. You're going to learn a little bit about CERT. But I'm going to go give a refresher, we'll say, on these things because a lot of people are missing a lot of things and they're not doing it and one of those things that they're not doing is they're not doing that additional training they should be doing and so the way to do that is get a hold of your emergency management um, or somebody the, the fire department police department say yeah hey um, what can we do to get involved how can we organize and do training and if they're not going to work with you this commonly happens in, in parts of the United States. Uh, get your own people, the people you train with, get their names, their numbers, uh, addresses, email addresses, whatever, so that you guys can work on this stuff together 
and train. But what you want to be doing is constantly training. And, you know, in the, in the uh, civilian world, they train till they get it right. In the military, they train until they can't get it wrong. And that's what every one of you need to do is go out and practice these things and know your strengths, your weaknesses. And again, back on the communications thing, if you can't communicate, you're dead in water. So the other thing to have is, is, is your whistle. Sometimes you get to get attention that way. So always have a whistle with you. So that's my, my um, well, so the ballot box, or not the ballot box, on my soapbox. That's my kind of speech on being prepared. Have several ways to communicate, okay? So with that said, let's get right into the CERT manual. Okay, let's turn around and grab, as far as I know, this is the latest CERT manual out there. I taught from it um, back in November. It's the last time I, I did a CERT course. But some of the things I want to talk to you about is what happens after CERT training. And this is where it gets kind of sticky. So uh, a lot of times what happens is people get their certificate, they get their vest, they go about their way, they put the, the stuff in the closet and never do it again. No, get in there, get involved, stay trained, keep training and keep training. Even if you don't unfortunately have an emergency manager or somebody to train with, find people you took the course with and get together and train. You're gonna be given a cert book, so use that cert book to train from. Okay, I'm gonna show this to you. You can read it, freeze frame it, whatever you wanna do. So, let's look at what it says. It says, upon completion, you're gonna get a, a certificate, and it said, volunteer tier should reinforce their skills. Okay, again. That's one of the things that you have to do as a CERT member. The other thing I'll tell you to do, I'm not going to go over this very long, but um, meet with your, your neighbors and work with them. Try to get things set up in your neighborhood. So let me move this piece of paper in your neighborhood and get set up. Train, train, train. Get your neighbors involved. Let them know who you are. And what you're doing. Uh, best way to do that, I've, I've trained on uh, getting flyers out to people, information, take those that, that info, uh, the handouts from FEMA, if you can get them, take them to your neighbors and say, hey, this is uh, who I am, put on your vest, whatever, tell them who you are, if you've got an ID card or cards, um, maybe you leave it with those people. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to get involved. Those are important to do. Otherwise, when things happen and you want to go out into your neighborhood, we'll say your neighborhood, not, not the big, you know, town and, and grow across town, across city, but in your neighborhood, let yourself be the organizer for your neighborhood. Meet your neighbors. I met my neighbors. I know who they are. They knew who I am. They asked me things. They call me on the phone. Uh, I, I spoke about evacuations, you know, about three weeks ago. Who they call? Ron. We're going to call Ron because he knows what's going on. And that's the person you need to be. So I'd highly advise you to do that. The other thing I would highly advise you to do, let's just see here. A couple of them here. You're gonna wanna get out. And let's see what we got here. Show it to you. Gotta wear glasses sometimes, close range. Um, we just talked about that distributing preparedness materials. So you can see that. That's one of the things that CERT people need to be doing. So um, I would highly advise you to do that. Distribute those materials around your neighborhood. Let people know who you are. There you go. Another thing I would say is that you're part of a mini multi-agency and you should have the responsibility to learn about the disasters in your community. So uh, go to emergency management and let them know about the disasters. 
that you know about and let's prepare for those and get ready. And so that's another thing that you as a certain individual should be doing. A lot of people forget this stuff, but that's what all of us need to be doing. Preparing for our, our disasters. Okay. With that said, there's other things that we should do too. Let's go to those. So preparedness is the key. Um, let's just go with, let's see here. I got these things bookmarked and I've got it twisted and turned. Okay. So we talked about training with the emergency management if you can or others. So you definitely want to do that. Flip a couple of pages here. Never works out the way you want to, you know. Okay, so as an instructor, one of the things that you need to do in the community, and a lot of times in a really big community like uh, Oklahoma City where I'm at, um, you need to basically make the people aware of the response process. And, and so what that means is just go, don't go to some other jurisdiction and respond. Now, I'm not telling you you can't call them and ask them if they need help. You can, you can do that. But in the interim, you need to work with emergency management or the fire department or police department. That's who you need to get a hold of and see how they respond to emergencies and in what conditions. So that those are simple things to do. It's better if you have something to communicate like ham radio. I'm telling you, ham will open up a lot of doors. Uh, a lot of people get into storm chasing and eventually they see that's going nowhere working with emergency management. So what do they do? They get their ham license and work with emergency management. I've seen that happen time and time again. And that's the way it is. Um, with that said, um, get involved. And these are the things that when you get involved, um, you can do. And again, it's going to emphasize the practice, practice, practice. The one thing I will tell you to do is that not only practice, 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 but also take the ICS courses. Because a lot of times people go through the CERT program, they're told about the ICS 100, 200, um, 700, 800. And this is something that you need. And if you're going to get serious, you have to communicate. You're going to have to have not only the search training, but you're going to have to understand how the emergency management system works and who has what responsibilities in a disaster and who's in charge of what. And that's what the IC courses are about, the ICS courses. And so you can look those up online through FEMA and probably Google and find it. But um, that's what I want to share with you today. If you're a CERT member, get involved. If you can't get involved, don't know, get with your old teammates that you trained with, whatever, and build a team, let's call it a team, and start training on those materials. Keep talking to emergency management, the, the firemen or the fire chief or the um, chief of police, somebody, and find out what you can do to be active. And I'm going to tell you again, Get your communications up and running. That way, if it's a big enough disaster, and I've worked those disasters where there is no communications, you now can communicate via ham radio. Worst case scenario, I'd say GRMS. Um, the, the one thing I would say about GRMS is the bubble pack radios that you buy at Walmart, um, a lot of people have those radios. And so they can interfere. You can hear them. They can hear you simplex. And you're going to have a lot of people out there on those frequencies trying to communicate with their neighbors. And you're going to have to talk over those people with bubble pack radios. So if so somebody's too close to you, uh, guess what? They're probably not going to hear you. Or you're going to get walked on, as they say. So I would highly instruct you to look at ham radio. Again, it's, you have to take a test, um, look into it, get the technicians. And uh, that's all I got. So uh, be safe. And if you have any questions, let me know. This is Cert Instructor Ron. I hope I shared something with you today that a lot of cert people need to know.
with that, God bless and be saved. Adios.